This is me using the strongest fire spell on this monster in front of me. And this is me using the magnify materia attached to a fire materia using the strongest spell on a bunch of enemies. Look at all the explosions that happen. It's literally like a chain reaction. This is the magnify materia that you get as soon as you start chapter 9. This means when you leave the gold saucer and make your way from the South Corral region all the way over to the Gungaga region. Make sure to grab this from Kate Sith and attach it onto anyone in your party. That way you can do some all-powerful magic and have it hit multiple enemies. And if you decide to use, let's say, haste on one of your teammates, all the teammates will get haste. Just pay attention to the material that shows up when you get a new character in your party. And that's just one of the things that you shouldn't miss in the Gungaga region, which I've themed this entire room for. So let's dive into what else we can find. Also, there's timestamps down below, so feel free to use that too. Entering into the Gungaga region is really simple. All you have to do is just drive your buggy right from the previous Southern Coral region right into it. And the moment you land is the moment that you can explore. And there are a couple of objectives that you can do as soon as you arrive, such as going to a Kujata sanctuary immediately. This will help you be able to take on Kujata right away at Chali Simulator because it'll be one power lower than its maximum amount and at this point of the game if you're following along with all of our videos and powering up with the right equipment you should be able to take down kujata with one power of course you can do the other kujata sanctuaries in the game but believe it or not it's better to run through the entire main story in the gungaga region until you get access to the chocobo it just gets handed to you as soon as you immediately complete the story which will allow you to jump around on these mushrooms throughout the map which brings us to our next point traversing by these mushrooms using your chocobo when you open Open up your mini map you can look around you'll spot these little mushrooms which will actually help guide you to where you need to go on the map if you're ever lost and you're trying to head over to an objective and it looks impossible look for mushrooms across from other mushrooms that way you'll be able to get to a spot immediately now speaking of things that will help you traverse a lot simpler in the gungaga region you should always make sure to hit the chocobo stops. Chocobo stops are going to be important because they're going to be placed right by mushrooms. And since mushrooms are on a fast teleport, having a chocobo stop in an area where there's a lot of mushrooms for access is going to be necessary when you're trying to figure out where you need to go next. While you're at Gungaga Village, you want to make sure that you're going ahead and buying cards when you go to the shops. Cards are always important for your queen's blood, which you should also be doing while you're in Gungaga Village. Challenge all the players there because because all of them have prize cards that you can add onto your deck and you can come up with different strategies with them. Make sure to also stop by the weapons vendor to check out the accessories like the outlaw bangle and the crocodile bracelet because you can go ahead and item transmute them into the higher tier version. The reason I was able to do this is because I favorited the higher tier version that I found with my chocobo later on that way this it marked it up in the stores so i was like oh i have to go ahead and buy this item so bought this item transmuted it and then it became much more powerful so make sure you're always buying the newer accessories in every single place you go to also it's a great place to check if you missed any weapons and purchase them chocobo gear is also big because it's going to help you in the gold saucer so make sure to buy the region's chocobo gear whenever you come across it. You can also buy materials that you may need for transmutation. There's some really expensive ones in Gungaga, like this 10,000 gil one. So if you need more of something, they have all the goods here. Make sure that you're also doing the expedition intels, which unlock the excavation intels because you get access to a lot of accessories while your chocobo is digging them up, such as the crucible bracer, the witch's armlet, which comes with one materia link slot and three extra materia link slots, the full throttle wrist guards which increase strength by 10% and they increase max HP by 500. This is pretty good. The riot vest which increases vitality by 10% and also increases the max HP by 500. And for those of that don't know, vitality increases your physical defense as you can see by the little attribute thing in the blue mark. Sorcerer's earrings that increase magic power by 10% and increases max MP by 6. You might want to put that on Aerith or let me know who you'd actually put it on. And the Cetra Talisman which increases the spirit by 10% and increases max MP by 6. Gungaga's Expedition Intels also give you access to another Excavation Intel, which gives you the following. Enhanced Outlaw Bangle, the Enhanced Crocodile Bracelet, the Jeweled Ring, which grants immunity to Petrify and Stone, the White Cape that actually prevents you from turning into a Toad. Trust me, some enemies actually do this to you in the game, and it's really annoying, especially in the Gungaga region. The Malboro Orb, which allows you to extend the duration of detrimental status effects to foes, but 
reduces the duration of detrimental status effects inflicted on the wearer. So if you throw out bio on the enemy, it should stay poisoned for a lot longer than it originally did. And if the enemy poisoned you, it should also be reduced. Besides just the excavation intels, you should know by now that if you do expedition intels, you'll get led to the classified intel. And the classified intel leads to the very interesting, as I like to call the boss of the area, known as the Great Malboro. But the intel is called the Sultan Stench. These are the most annoying enemies in all of Final Fantasy games. It's super weak to ice damage, but if you want and you're under level, you can pretty much just rinse and repeat and farm this one until you max out level within the area before moving on. It's what I like to do with every single classified intel. Also, don't forget to assess these things. You have to assess everything when you're in the area. Hey, before our next tip, I'm going to need you to just hit that like button and hit that subscribe button down below. That way it shows me you guys want another video of the next region that's coming up. That's it. It's that simple. Let's keep going. The proto relics or the phenomenon intels in this area in Gangaga is going to be really simple. All you have to do is just beat a bunch of combat simulators that show up on the map. It's not deep. There's no crazy mini game to it. So you'll be able to knock this out with no problem. Doing this, of course, will always advance you closer to Gilgamesh, which I have an entire video on my channel dedicated to if you're curious to find out what rewards and things you can get. If you've done all the Moogle Emporium so far in the game, by the time you come to the one in Gangaga, this should be the fifth one that you are doing. And when you complete this really annoying Moogle Emporium, which I'm glad we're almost done with in the game at this point, you'll get access to the Way of the Fist Volume 4, which is going to give 10 SP for Tifa, and Fortunes Untold Volume 3, which is going to give you 10 SP for Kate Sith. This is going to be extremely useful for getting their folios up, and by collecting these, this is how you max them out. As usual, if you need Moogle medals, there are three things you can do. One, on all the activation intel towers, you just climb on top of them and break the boxes. If you find any cash locations, you just go there and break the boxes. Or you can be like those people in the comments who like to save spam in front of boxes, reload their game, break the boxes nonstop to get as many Moogle medals as they may need. Now, believe it or not, there is actually a side quest that Barrett gets a weapon for here known as the Fafnir Rifle. This is going to be called the quest, The Pursuit of Perfection. It's basically a little treasure hunt to find these little stones, but when you find them and you give them to this blacksmith, he's going to create Barrett this amazing weapon that has an ability called Point Blank. Basically, what this does is consume ATB charge for a close range attack that sends enemies flying. I wanted to test and find out if it does that, and it actually does that. Really cool attack to have when enemies are close enough to Barrett. One of the most annoying quest in the region is called Oh Chicken Where Art Thou? And it's really stupid because you just have to bait a chicken to come back into a farm and it just gets worse and worse and the distance gets further. But the reward for this is going to be a lucky amulet, which is going to give you plus 10 luck. And the benefit of having luck is that it's going to increase your chances of landing a critical hit in combat. It also increases the success or the steal ability in combat and you can also increase the success rate of morph in combat and I did these with Yuffie. The next one's going to be Teach Me Great Warrior, which is essentially a quest where Yuffie has to go around helping an apprentice learn how to fight and all you get from this is going to be the Secret of the Ninja Volume 4, which is going to give Yuffie 10 SP as well as increasing your relationship with Yuffie. No special items, but SP points are valuable in this game, so you can use that on your folios. Another quest is the Spice of Life that is going to increase the relationship with Aerith, but you're going to get Chakra Materia Earring which is going to replace out the chakra basic material completely and this is an accessory so having this is going to be very useful because it's already like a maxed out materia you heal more based on the amount of hp you lose so this is a very useful ability to have and with this being maxed out it's going to be great i threw this on tifa by the way now besides the magnified materia that we talked about in the beginning of chapter 9 there are some other materia that you can find just laying around in gungaga one of them is going to be the steadfast fast block materia which you can go ahead and get from playing the song Cinco de Chocobo, basically at the piano sitting right in Gungaga Village. I'm really bad at the piano games in this game, and I actually play piano in real life. I'm just so bad at this. Let me know, do you guys suck at this piano game? I feel like I'll never get anything good from it. But essentially, if you do get it, the Steadfast Materia is going to help you take less damage and you gain ATB while you're guarding. So as you level up this Materia, the more ATB boost you get by guarding, that way you can dish 
dish out attacks a lot easier while being defensive. In the Gangaga reactor, if you're playing the main story, you'll find the subversion material located at the reactor in basement level 4. You'll find this material glowing right here at this rest spot, you won't miss it. And basically what it allows you to do is use the moves Breach, which removes protective buffs like Barrier, Mana Ward, Shield and Reflect, as well as Dispel, which is going to remove positive status effects. This is going to be extremely useful on enemies in the game that like to buff up. And as you approach the end game, you're going to find out that enemies love doing this. I would grab this now and try to level that up as soon as possible. When you get access to a Chocobo, if you head outside of Gangaga Village, right over here at this spot on your map, you'll see this little bridge crossing in a town, and you look to this corner, there's a little mushroom here, but you'll also see a materia glowing in the distance. Just jump on this mushroom, land on it, and you'll find the warding materia, which is really cool because if you link it to any materia that has a detrimental status, it'll help grant resistance towards that, so you don't have to deal with those effects during battle. Now, one accessory that you can find in Gangaga is going to be the poison materia earrings. You can find this by going east of Fiend Intel 5. Pretty much, it's going to be at this reactor construction site area, and right in front of me is where you're going to find this chest that you're going to open up and find the poison materia earrings. It's going to say in the accessory info that it allows the use of the highest level of poison materia granting access to spells Bio, Biora, and Bioga. So you don't have to even level up the original poison materia if you have one of these. So within this cache location all the way in South Gangaga area, right by the Phenomenon Intel 1 Turks training facility, you're going to be finding the protective boots inside of the Cliffside storehouse. So basically they are going to grant you immunity to slow and immunity to stop. So enemies won't be able to slow you down at all and stop you. That's that's pretty much what this does, so go ahead and grab these if you're running into enemies that do this to you. If you are getting a lot of points from doing the intel in the area, Charlie's going to have some interesting materia that you can buy. The first one is going to be Petrify, which is basically going to use these stone attacks with Petrify on them. It's great, they're powerful. Just look how much area they also cover when you use it. The next one is the Magic Focus Materia. Basically for this one, it's going to be linked to another Materia, therefore going to increase the potency and durations of the spells that's linked with it. So in this footage, you can see Cloud using the Fire Materia, but when I have the Magic Focus Materia attached to it, the Fire spell ends up doing more damage when attacking the enemy. The next Materia is the Limit Siphon. Uh, comments, please help me with this word. This one is going to allow you to absorb an allies limit gauge to fill your own with limit siphon. So in this example, I have Cloud and Aerith over here. When Aerith's limit break starts to fill up, I grab it and then I'm able to use Cloud's limit break successfully by stealing Aerith's. It's pretty nice. I feel like it would have probably been better on Aerith so that way I can heal the entire party when the HP is running low. But this one's a fun one to have so make sure to go ahead and grab this. Synergy Support is another one that you can purchase from Chadley and this one is simply just going to increase the synergy by one when another party member uses a synergy ability during battle. If you have this on a character you're not using the synergy ability on, you're just going back and forth between two characters, this is going to be really useful just to build the synergy bars over time. Now, if you were doing your Fiend Intel in the Gangaga area and making sure that you assess everything, well, then here is a couple of material you get from the Combat Simulator challenges. This one is going to be for the Elemental material, which comes from defeating the Savage Grand Horn and the Maloceros. This elemental materia is really broken. If you link any materia with it, for this example, fire and ice materia, cloud sword or whoever's weapon you're using is going to then do damage according to that element. So multi-element materia is going to be really broken, especially with this on any of the characters. If you defeat the Broomfower and the Grand Horn Warden, then you're going to be able to get the speed up materia. The cool thing about the speed up materia is that you can stack them all the way up to 100%. You can't go up beyond that, but you can speed up your characters, and that could be pretty unique for a special build in the game. If you defeat the Pastel Amphidex and the Fulvorn Veneris, I'm probably saying these names so crazily wrong, you're going to be able to do that combat simulator and get the Spirit Up Materia. This is basically just going to raise your magic defense. If that's something you want to do, you can go ahead and, and do it. But the biggest combat simulator of them all, it's going to be the Biological Intel Head Case, and this one is going to be done from assessing 14 enemies from Gangaga as well as getting your enemy skill material up to three stars. You're then going to go ahead and fight the Mind Flayer, 
who I actually had a really hard time beating. The conditions for this simulator was to defeat the Mind Flayer first. So what I had to do was switch out my party so I can only bring in two characters, just Cloud and Tifa. That way we could just non-stop do synergy attacks and then limit break to finish it off. This monster is weak to synergy attacks. So keep that in mind. That is how you're going to be able to stagger it. And then once you're able to take it out, you'll get the enemy skill Mind Blast. And Mind Blast is really cool because it's going to unleash a really powerful magic attack over a wide area and it's going to increase stagger. The only con of this is that it can only be used once per battle and it takes up two ATB to perform. Now that you're a pro at the Gungaga region, you should check out this video on the screen right now that's blocking my face.